not afraid to let go uh. You decide if you're ever gonna let me know Yeah, suicide if you ever try to let go uh. I'm sad and know, yeah I'm sad and know, yeah Who am I? Someone not afraid to let go uh. You decide if you're ever gonna let me know Hey, what's up guys? It's Arlen. We're checking out Game Theory. Does Fortnite make you violent? So, here we go. Sup fam, it's your boy back for another round of Fortnite videos. Today we're gonna mix things up a bit. It's the Liquor Strip Challenge. For every kill I get to choose. He's making fun of rice gum again. <laughs> whether our guest removes one piece of clothing or I can lick them. No joke, this is a real thing. Seriously, it's a real thing. Brittany is our guest today. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, Brittany couldn't make it, so I'm your guest. Name's Dave. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Today's guest is Sweaty Dave. Don't expect too many kills today, guys. Don't run into the grenade, you idiot. Fine, take off the damn hat. Noob! All you had to do was shoot me! Shoot me! Shoe. Darn it! Other shoe! Why aren't you wearing any socks? Keeps my feet cool. I tend to get a bit hot. Shut up, sweaty day. <laughs> this is some rice gum would not do, but it'd be funny if he had to if his girl guest didn't show up. Why is everyone so bad today? Ah, liquor strip. Ah, uh, shirt, I guess. Oh, thank goodness, it was getting hot in here. Oh. <laughs> oh, ho! Last choice, cause let me tell you, if I don't wear socks, I bet you can guess what else I don't wear. No, please lick, lick then. <sighs> thank you. Thank you for putting your intro up to Matt Pat. Damn it. Woo. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, a show that, as always, couldn't exist without you. And with regards to today's episode, that's especially true. As an astounding 330,000 of you who saw my last video on Fortnite helped to make this theory a reality by taking our poll about gaming habits and your personality type. Guys, that kind of support is overwhelming. Most scientific papers that I read for this series have like a thousand people participating if they're lucky and if they're paid. So thank you. Seriously, thank you so much. And without even having to cry the numbers, there are some findings that I think that science will be very interested to explore further. Like the fact that apparently there are over 600 different genders. You know, I've always... 600 different gender... Wait. No, there's just male and female. Let me stop saying that. That's controversial. Taking pride knowing that we have a diverse audience watching, but I never in my wildest dreams imagined it was so diverse to include people who self-identify as everything from a 1960s era Coca-Cola bottle to a weaponized battle poster. I've heard that gender is a spectrum and all that, but can someone explain to me whether gay jalapeno is to the left or right of literal piece of human fecal matter? Oh, and uh, by the way, to the 1,610 of you who responded with Apache attack helicopter. Thank you so much for raising awareness for the oft-overlooked helisexuals. Also, to all of you who say that this show is for kids, I think we finally have our conclusive evidence that that simply isn't the case. The average age of respondents to this survey was two quadrillion years old. Apparently, theorists just have really good genes. And to the 242 of you who responded with 69 lol, good one. You got me. So clearly there was some data that needed to be cleaned up, but with 330,000 responses in total, even throwing out a few thousand left me with hundreds of thousands of data points. So the real average age of survey takers was 17, and the male-female split was 80-20. The goal of this whole experiment was to explore the major differences between the players of two different, yet very similar and very popular Battle Royale-style games. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, PUBG for short, and Fortnite. Secondly, I wanted to examine whether aggressiveness or violent video games increase 
increased aggression in their players in the wake of news story. That's not true. I don't think... I think aggression actually lowers when it comes to playing video games, honestly. Reads like this. Now the latest video game craze is Fortnite. It's free, addictive, violent, and kids love it. And this. Possible crackdown on violence in video games. President Trump meeting with top executives from the gaming industry. And I gotta say, after crunching the numbers, it's gonna be pretty hard to make video games a scapegoat ever again. So I hope you're listening, media and scientific community. I mean, let's face it, I know they're not, but you know what? You are. And arming yourself with knowledge to use in your next Twitter rant aimed at the Wall Street Street Journal is all that truly matters. Firstly, are PUBG players significantly different from Fortnite players? Well, statistically, no. Not a whole lot. In the survey, I asked gamers to break down whether they had or were currently playing either Fortnite, PUBG, both, or neither. And when comparing the gamers who were only playing Fortnite with the ones who were only playing PUBG, there wasn't a whole lot of difference. PUBG players were slightly older, 17.5 versus 16, and were much more heavily skewed toward the PC Master Race, with 63% preferring PC versus 44% of Fortniteers. And honestly, that shouldn't be all that surprising, right? Fortnite is more widely released on console and didn't start its early days on PC only. So those were the minor differences, but in the important areas like play style, social behavior, and personality type, the two were practically identical. They even agreed on their stance in the classic internet debate of fighting one horse-sized duck versus a hundred duck-sized horses. 55% of Fortniteers and 55% of PUBGers agreed fighting a horse size duck wins. And can I just be honest here? How is this still a question online? I feel like at this point, the one horse-sized duck answer is the clear winner. Now, what I want to see debated is whether you'd want to fight a tiger-sized hedgehog or 100 hedgehog-sized tigers. Now, that is a battle that feels a bit more balanced to me. Go ahead, start debating it now in the comments. Go ahead, we got a lot of data to get through. But here's where things got interesting. While there wasn't much of a difference between people who had played either PUBG or Fortnite, there was a significant significant difference between people who had played both games versus those who had only played one. Let's call them the hardcore battle royalers versus the more casual battlers. And what's more, the group who hadn't played any battle royale style game also showed significantly different results from the other two categories. So from here on out, I'll be comparing the battle royalers group, consisting of those who actively played both games, against the pub nighters, those who've only played one of those games, to the group of people who hadn't played either. A category I'm gonna call the iDubber, which obviously stands for I Don't Usually Battle Royale. That C U C is silent, and any similarity to known and popular YouTuber names is purely coincidental, I assure you. Now, to give some context, <laughs> the iDubbers were, on average, slightly older, 18, and the Battle Royalers were closer to Fortnite age, 16.5. In total, of those 330,000 responses, about 150,000 were Pub Nighter, 130,000 were an iDubber, and the other 50,000 were Battle Royalers. Yeah, and there were a few things all three groups agreed on, like how they're all slightly better than average at like video that. games. Yeah. When asked to rate their skills as a gamer, 68% of responses, regardless of category rated themselves at either a 7 or an 8. Only one or two truly brave souls rated themselves as a 1. To those people I say thank you. You are the true American hero. Everyone also tended to agree that consistently good play was better than winning just once. In general, that was a 70-30 split. But then I turned to analyze aggressiveness and Well, true, because on Fortnite consistently good gameplay even though you're not getting wins still ranks you up and still gets you you, you still feel a sense of Fulfillment, you know. Making behavior. If battle royale games are truly making players more violent, then it stands to reason that gamers would report that their play style is more aggressive in those games. Furthermore, we would expect to see that gamers who play non shooter games would yield lower aggressiveness scores, and that those who had played multiple shooter games would have the highest scores of them all. And wouldn't you know it, but that's exactly what the data showed. When asked about risk taking behavior and aggressiveness of tactics in game, the battle royale royalers were the highest, showing an average rating of 7.3 out of 10. The pub nighters, who only played one game, were slightly lower at just 7, and the iDubbers were least aggressive and most risk averse, with a score of 6.5. Risk-taking behavior followed a similar pattern, 7.3, 7, and 6.6. .6. To further explore the topic, I also asked about pacifist routes in games, and whether, given the option, the player would choose to take the peaceful, non-aggressive route, or just solve the problem by running- I would say I'm more of a 
pacifist in battle royale games because kill 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 kind of doesn't work in battle royale games you kind of got to be like on your survival shit you know what i'm saying like you got to be safe and guns blazing. Plus, since I recognize that most pacifist routes in games, let's be honest, suck, I included an option of, no, I wouldn't choose it because it's a mechanic that's usually poorly implemented to ensure that people weren't avoiding non-violent playstyles because no one but Undertale can figure out how to make a complete game without killing things. Anyway, the results were shocking. A whopping 48% of iDubbers would choose pacifism when offered, compared to only 29% of battle royalers. And, as we would expect, Pub nighters were smack in the middle at 32%. So it would seem like the data is telling us that Fortnite and PUBG are in fact prompting more aggressive strategies and higher amounts of risk taking. But before you run off and misquote me, Good Morning America, hold up. Correlation doesn't mean causation. Just because aggressive play lines up with a certain genre of game, there are any number of variables to account for that. Maybe it's not the game causing the aggression, but rather the gamer's personality being more prone to aggressive playstyles. And that's where the personality test comes in. I asked all respondents to take a Myers-Briggs-esque personality assessment, which breaks down your personality into 16 key types based on four different categories. Now, I go into much more detail in this in a past theory that you can watch right here, but to briefly summarize, the breakdown goes roughly like this. Are you quiet and introverted, or do you like being extroverted and talking with are you intuitive and focused on imagination and ideas, or observant and focused on the actual world and real-life events around you? When making decisions, are you a thinker and use logic, or a feeler who considers the emotions of others? And lastly, how do you run your life? Are you structured and scheduled, or open and flexible? That's a judging versus prospecting, J versus P. Neither word really makes sense there. I honestly just think they ran out of letters. Anyway, my logic was this. Games don't necessarily make people more aggressive, but certain personalities types may be more drawn to these sorts of games. We would expect to see some personalities show up more or over-index for playing battle royale games if this is indeed true. And immediately in the data, one point stood out. The royalers were just more extroverted overall, by about 14% relative to the iDubber category. So seeing that, I really started to crunch some numbers. And uh, if I could just take a minute for a PSA right now. Teachers, I'm Matt Pat, online personality and all-around nerd, and I have one thing to say to you. Screw PowerPoint presentations and introduce your students to Excel. Anyone can drag and drop a stupid star wipe. Learning how to master a pivot table, on the other hand, is like a nerd's greatest superpower. It allows you to totally teabag data. So teach your students some useful life skills. And remember, knowledge is power. The more you no. So to eliminate the variable of the games, I crossed the eight different personality traits measured by the test against aggression and risk-taking responses. And it turns out my hypothesis was- He put Nathan Drake, Nathan Drake in a video because he is a risk taker. Average reported their levels of aggression to be 5.7. Extroverts, on the other hand, rated themselves at nearly 6.5 on average. Thinkers also rated their playstyle as more aggressive relative to feelers, 6.3 compared to 5.7. And wouldn't you know it, but a combination of the two traits, extroverted thinkers produced the most aggressive. Players. You guys should tell me down below are you guys extroverts or introverts? You should tell me down below. I wonder. By far actually see the scale go up. Introverted feelers are at the super low 5.5, introverted thinkers and extroverted feelers jump up to 6.2, again remember that both of these only have one of the more aggressive personality trait types, and finally extroverted thinkers, the double whammy, are at the highest levels of aggressive play at 6.8. A similar trend is visible in the risky strategy category. Meanwhile, the other personality traits, intuiting versus observing and judging versus prospecting, showed no difference. Fascinating, right? But if you actually stop and think about what these traits mean, it starts to make sense. An aggressive strategy is going to require you to get up in people's faces, be forceful and assertive, all things that are much easier for an extrovert to do, even in a virtual world. It also means that you're going to have to make enemies by directly confronting them, something that a feeler, who's going to be more sensitive to the emotions of others, is going to want to avoid. So when I went a layer deeper and divided up extroverted gamers who play Battle Royale games, Games versus introverted 
battle royalers, the trend still held. Extroverted battle royalers were more aggressive relative to their introverted counterparts. Same with battle royale thinkers versus feelers. It even existed in the iDubber category. No one is questioning whether playing Mario games is getting people to take more risks, and yet there you were. People who played platformers with the E and T traits were just more likely to rate themselves as being more aggressive. So the long story short, it's not the game making people aggressive or teaching them bad behavior. Players with personalities that are more comfortable taking risks and getting aggressive are just more drawn to these sorts of high action, high intensity games. So already I've given strong evidence to that initial point that I wanted to prove. That battle royale games aren't the rage virus that mainstream media outlets want to make them. But Obviously, there's another component to all this, the social component. Could games not only be not detrimental to gamers, but rather beneficial? Could playing Fortnite and PUBG actually help gamers get good socially? That is what I set out to find next, and the results of which I'll be sharing with you in just a few days. If I'm being totally honest, all this data has been a beast to sort through. So things are taking a bit longer than I would have liked, but I wanted to make sure that I got this theory out to you sooner rather than later, simply because I promised it a few weeks ago at this point, and I didn't want to have to keep you waiting any longer. So it's my goal to have the follow-up for you this Thursday. Can playing Fortnite or PUBG actually help you socially? Ring the bell to ensure that you don't miss when it gets uploaded, and in the meantime, remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. He <laughs> said a game theory. Well, I, he's got a lot of great points, actually. I cannot argue him on a lot of the great points. I mean, I would consider myself kind of extroverted a little bit. I don't know. I'm not sure. I kind of screw the... I go through the spectrum. Sometimes I'm... I'm extrovert and sometimes I'm introvert. It just depends on the situation. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and peace.